I think uh, oftentimes, <clears throat> excuse me, in our in our world, uh, Satan doesn't want us to have any light shown on this, right? And we need to use the opportunity in these settings where we have the the uh, opportunity to speak about God, to speak about um, our relationship with Him, to to go you know, to shine that light, and it it gives us that opportunity because in the world we're not allowed to say much, and we're not allowed to say much in the workplace. We're not allowed to say and. Here we've got that ability to share and to, uh, to make that a little more open. Um, when, we, when we talk about uh, God creates as, as sexual beings, you know, one of the things that I, I've said in, in presentations and I share with, with uh, clients of mine uh, is that, you know, sexual intercourse is easy. It's easy to find someone with whom to have sexual intercourse. It's not difficult as long as your standards are not are not high you know if you you lower your standards <laughs> far enough uh, you're going to find somebody and I, I believe you can have as much sex as you want to have um, other other animals do it all the time right um, it's just the natural thing to do and again these are popular cultural messages it's the way we're built it's the reason we're made and so we talk about sometimes sex without intimacy uh, we talk about it you know how perfect that is there are just no emotional entanglements anonymous sex may be even better but um, if, if you've you only have to sit in a physician's office a short period of time, in a counselor's office, in a minister's office, and other people who are in people helping pr professions. It, it doesn't take long to hear the stories of heartache and heartbreak and betrayal and abandonment and on and on and on, uh, stories of pain and grief and, and devastation. I have an, I have an old-fashioned idea I just believe that God created us to be a notch above the other animals. Just a notch. I think, I think in Genesis there's a, there's a, 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 a mention of that, that He created us to be different. He created us to have uh, ethics and morals and, and decision-making processes and not to be guided by our instincts. If it feels good, do it. That's what that's all about. And so he did. There's no question. And, and Gary, this is right on target with Gary, that, that he created us with the capacity to be attracted to other people. There are certain, and, and the whole field of attraction is a fascinating Feel and a lot of research has been done about that visual attraction. We're attracted to other people's faces, to the shape of the faces, the symmetry of the faces. We're attracted to other people's body types or certain body parts. Uh, we're attracted to the, the way people move. We're attracted to the way people smell. We're attracted to uh, just all kinds of, of human elements. God created us that way. He created us with the capacity for arousal, sexual arousal. That's not what we did to ourselves, although we do it to ourselves now, but, but we are created with the, the capacity to be sexual beings, to have sexual intercourse for the purpose of reproduction, but not only for the purposes of reproduction. Uh, Dr. Ed Wheat, a longtime um, uh, counselor, uh, he's always been based in Abilene, unless I'm, I've missed a, a recent move, has written a book and has revised it uh, recently, but the book has been a longtime uh, a, a classic for Christian sexuality. It's called Intended for Pleasure. Uh, Dr. Ed Wheat intended for pleasure. I highly uh, recommend that. So, it, 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 you know, he, he created us with the capacity to resist our urges, to resist and to, and to discipline ourselves. There's no better example of this, I think, than in the Sermon on the Mount when, when uh, 
As Jesus was saying, you know, if somebody smites you on your right cheek, turn the other cheek. Boy, talk about an unnatural response. Oh, man, the natural response is, you know, let me at him. Uh, but Jesus said, no, if you're going to be my disciple, I expect more of you than other people. Turn the other cheek. Go the second mile. If somebody compels you to give you his coat, give him your cloak as well. Um, it's, it's not easy, but it's not complicated. It's a simple principle to understand, and I think that principle uh, applies very, very directly when we're talking about uh, sexuality as well. Um, one of the examples I love from the Old Testament, I love the Bible because the Bible just tells it like it is. You know, the good and the bad and the ugly. And one of the ugly chapters in the Bible is in um, 2 Samuel 11, the story of David and Bathsheba, King David. King David, and I think the last time I taught this, Brad made the point uh, during the class that David was out on, I mean, he was not at war in the spring of the year when kings go out to war. David was not where he was supposed to be, but he was on the, he was on the, 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 the top of his palace or on the porch of his palace, and he was looking out over the city, and he saw Bathsheba, and, and Brad uh, made, the, made the observation, it may not be the first time that he had watched women bathe on top of their house and she was bathing and may not be the first time he'd watched her and so his urges he did not control those he sent he's the king he sent for her came to his palace and they had sex uh, and it may be this is just my supposition it may be that David was thinking you know I'm the king what happens in the palace stays in the palace right Except when it doesn't, and this didn't. And, of course, there was a pregnancy that, that, uh, that resulted, and then there was all kinds of dominoes that fell, really dark, ugly dominoes that fell after that. Uh, and so my point is that, that we're created with the capacity to resist those temptations that we don't always do. <laughs>